Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we have another brand new figure to take a look at. We've got another Howlon good figure, and that's super exciting because they have been gracing us with some of the best releases that they've ever had. And not only that, but they have absolutely been hammering out figure after figure like we've had so many lately. This is like the third review now, I believe, that I've had up for Howlon good now in the last few weeks, and they just revealed another figure yesterday into today which was a pentaceratops which looks absolutely amazing maybe even their best figure yet in my opinion but this time we have a species of ankylosaur that i've never seen get a figure before i definitely do not have any in my collection so that makes this release particularly exciting we have a tiansenosaurus and it looks really, really impressive, and just like usual, we have two different paint variants, because How Long Good usually will deliver two different paint variants of their figures, and yet again, I think both look absolutely amazing, so it's another one of those instances where it's pretty much impossible for me to choose one over the other. But you can obviously see here on the front of the box, you've got an image of both figures. You also have the species name, and it is in 135th scale, as well as the How Long Good logo. And then up here on the top, you can see quite a few different releases that are out from How Long Good, as we have, you know, numerous, but not all of the stuff that they've released. I don't see the uh, Therizinosaurus, I don't see the Quetzalcoatlus, list, so I don't know if, no, they're not on the bottom. So they're just kind of uh, starting to eliminate uh, different figures out of the box, because, I mean there's going to be a point where they absolutely couldn't fit them all in here anyway. But this is just basically to advertise a few other releases that are out currently in the How Long Good line. So uh, nothing really different going on here with the back outside of the fact that the species name and logos and stuff are kind of moved around. But it looks super cool, so let's pop the box open and check them out. So here they are, nice and small little ankylosaurs and man those are yet again absolutely gorgeous like even better than the images i had seen online the original promotional images had me super hyped for this but these absolutely look even better in hand than any images online had led me to believe the paint jobs of these are absolutely gorgeous of course but uh, I really like this one just because it reminds me so much of the PNSO Ankylosaurus. It's not exactly the same color, but similar sort of coloration to that. And that's something that I'm a big fan of. I'm very fond of that figure. So I instantly was really drawn to the paint scheme of this one. But having them both here in hand, I actually think I prefer this one just because the you know, really cool greenish tones they've used on this are incredibly striking. Like, I really can't say no to that. But they look really nice here at first glance, you know, our first viewing of them. But let's go ahead and check out how nice they truly are with a closer look. Now, of course, both of these figures are the same sculpt. The only difference would be the coloration between the two. So we'll only need to go over the actual sculpt once and then check out the colors on the other one. But you can see up here in the head sculpt, we have some really, really nice, very impressive fine detail, like the actual fine detail, the scale detail and everything looks extremely, extremely high quality and uh, also just generally extremely impressive. You know, you've got lots of variation of scale detail. Well, now we're losing focus. Scale detail and skin texture here in the face. You can also see like some larger kind of scoots there on the side of the jawline. And then, of course, more of an armored sort of a look as you lead up into the top of the head of the dinosaur if you look at it from you know a front facing view you've got the nostrils right there you can also see again tons of different color variation on the figure we also have a very nicely painted eye very small eye but perfectly placed and there's a nice gloss coat there on that black eye so that looks really good you can obviously see the mouth of the dinosaur is sculpted nicely and uh, again the Paintwork looks fantastic, and I love the fact that they've applied a really nice light wash that you see really abundant through the course of the figure, making sure all that detail pops really realistically, but you also see it here in the face. There's definitely a nice helping of that light wash here through the face of the dinosaur as well, and you can see again variation of color even as you lead up here into the kind of spike on the top of the head there. You can see some nice browns, and they very smoothly transition to a lighter tone there 
for the tip of that area and you can see the same thing up here and I love how much variation of color they have applied to this you can see lots of different tones of color applied to the just right here in the top of the head you know lots of variations of browns and blacks and all kinds of colors here which looks really really cool and if we lead over here to the opposing side of the head again it looks incredible over here I must say that how long good has been completely killing it lately and not only have they been killing it but they are very quickly rising to the top of the dinosaur figure producing companies like they really are excelling in a major major way pulling out some of the best figures that i've honestly ever seen but as we begin to lead back here into the neck you continue to see like some really nice looking detail we've got like skin wrinkles and everything galore here as far as the skin texture in the neck region and you can also see more of that here on the underside including the throat there for the dinosaur and then as you lead back up here to the top again there is just so much going on as far as the coloration goes there are so many different varying tones of color it would honestly be impossible for me to sit here and try to pick them all out there's just so much going on color wise and i think it looks really cool very flashy but at the same time very natural they absolutely did a great job when it comes to painting this again some of the best factory paint jobs i've ever seen are found in the how long good line and this is another perfect example of that because again this is as smooth and naturalistic as it gets and that light wash makes sure that every ounce of scale detail up here on the top pops in the best way possible and you can really see how impressive the scale detail is i love that you can see so much variation to the scale but also here when it comes to these kind of like scoots and stuff on the top you can kind of see scales that sort of circle around them as well which looks really neat Again, really impressive sculpt and paint, and I love the way that they painted these actually because you have like dark browns and then they kind of lead to lighter brown tips, and you see that through all of them. This is definitely, again, a figure that must have taken quite a while to paint, and it's impressive to look at this and say that that's a factory paint job. Like, honestly, that's almost mind-blowing, I would say. But as you move down here to the side of the figure, you see some more skin wrinkles, some more skin folds and stuff. As you lead down into the front leg, you've got some scoots, like armored scoots, hanging off of the side of the dinosaur. More skin wrinkles and folds as you move down the course of the front leg here. And as you lead down into the foot, we transition to a dark brown. You can see the nails are painted with a nice light tone of color, all very smooth as far as the application of the paint and the transitions go. And as you lead along the side of the dinosaur, not only do you again see more really nice looking scale detail, but you see tons of skin folds and skin wrinkles. Yet again, just kind of showing off the movement of the dinosaur as it's walking along really beautiful fine detail honestly everywhere and you can see some nice variations of browns that lead down here along the side just kind of spot and design here and there no specific rhyme or reason as far as the way that they are applied it's just kind of sporadic and it looks really good really natural as well and yet again the actual application of that color is extremely smooth and then we continue to lead along you see more again tons of skin wrinkles actually in the back of the leg as you lead down into the thigh you have just wrinkles galore even leading here into the knee in the front of the leg you can also see a nice big bulging calf muscle there and as you lead down again we transition to a darker brown into the ankle of the dinosaur and you can also see into the foot we have that darker brown we also have again the nicely painted nails this foot is currently leaving the ground as the dinosaur is walking along so it shows that walking movement quite nicely and then as we lead out here a little bit further we have a few more skin wrinkles some more really nice scale detail as well as a nice bend in the tail as we lead out toward that club tail and running along the top again we just continue to have that absolutely incredible appearance with so much color variation as well as that light wash just highlighting the paintwork of this in the best way possible and then you lead out into the club tail and yet again there's lots of really nice detailing out here even more color variation and a very strong dose of that light wash and that also looks quite incredible and as we lead here to the underside you could see some darker browns here leading along the underside of the club tail and then as we begin to lead back here along the underside you continue to see how impressive the fine detail is you also see that there is a cloaca present and as we continue to move along the underside of the dinosaur, you see how nice the scale detail looks. Quite a bit of variation of scale detail again as well. As you lead right here, you see some fairly larger scales, but then they become really fine as we reach the kind of like groin area of the dinosaur. Then they pick back up in a major way as you lead into this big bulging stomach that we have for our dinosaur. But on top of that, you can also see that we have some lighter tones here. 
that show up super smooth transition into those colors as well and then again we transition back to kind of like some smaller finer scaling as we lead back up toward the throat and then if we take a look at the opposing side yet again it looks incredible just as beautiful as it did on the first side you can see that this leg is trailing more so than that leg as that leg obviously is stepping forward actually i would say this leg is just currently leaving the ground to step forward as well and again you can see the skin wrinkles and everything as you lead up into the shoulder area of the dinosaur as you lead up out of the leg i should just say and uh, you can see some nice skin wrinkles there again showing that movement beautifully very nicely sculpted toes again really smooth transition to the browns in the feet of the dinosaur as you move along you see again more nice looking detail and paint work in the stomach region you can see this leg is kind of pushing into the stomach sort of wrinkling the skin right there and again very strong looking rear leg as we have that big bulging calf muscle especially at this point in time it's nice to see it bulging because you can see the leg over here is picking up off of the ground which means this rear leg currently is supporting the weight of the second half of the dinosaur so it would definitely be bulging you know flexing and you can see the foot sculpt again looks really nice down there as we lead out into the tail yet again so sculpt wise incredible paint wise incredible definitely one of the single best figures that how long good has had yet and i feel like each and every release that they have they're pretty much one upping their previous release and then we've got the alternate paint variant which i think might be my favorite of the two but as you look at it, it's got a pretty similar look overall to the coloration of the other one, which I actually think is really cool because then it kind of makes it look like they belong together, like they might be part of the same group. And I would imagine you could definitely see some slight color variation between the same species. So it's really neat to see that here with this version because we follow the same trend as far as like the lighter tones in the face, that light wash, which really shines on this one. And then again, the darker tones as you lead up here into the head. And then as you lead up into the head, you can see again, we have a similar design to what we had seen on the other one where we have just like a plethora of different coloration up here. But we have a really cool kind of a greenish tint to the top of this one, which definitely gives it a very striking appearance, like really, really impressive when it comes to the tones of color that they've chosen for this one, making it absolutely shine when it comes to those colors but we still continue to have that same kind of design if you look here along the side as you have the lighter tone for the body color and then you have the browns and everything that design through the course like just kind of spot and stripe and just show up sporadically you also have the browns still in the feet and the legs and everything as you transition down similar tone of color for the nails maybe slightly different but uh, the major difference seems to lie up here in the top again with those greenish tones and man is that ever appealing to the eye as we continue to move out you continue to have those nice greenish tones leading out into the club tail i actually think i might like the paintwork of the club tail in this one a little bit better than i liked on the initial one but uh same style of paintwork i would say on the underside as well again as we have the brown running through the bottom of the club tail and then we have some actually slightly different colors here because we actually have like almost like orangish tones showing up here and there on the underside of this one but fairly similar just a little bit different but you definitely when you're offering up a different paint variant you do want those differences on the figure but again i think they did yet another really good job on this one absolutely excellent application of the paint again i like that it looks so similar to the other one but different at the same time because it looks like you could display them together like they're part of the same group or part of the same herd and it makes complete sense and uh again just altering the tones of color slightly but even more so in an impressive and a little bit better visual i think with this one because i just really love those greenish tones that we have up here on the top mostly the greenish tones are though you can kind of see them everywhere but they really shine leading off of the kind of like uh, armored spikes and scoots and stuff running along the course of the figure like they really really pop up there in that area but again another really cool paint variant definitely two incredible figures worthy of any prehistoric collection as far as a size goes for a length you're looking at just shy of about six inches like just under or around 15 centimeters and then for a height not much in the way of a height a little under an inch and three quarters or about four centimeters maybe slightly over for a size comparison 
There is Mr. Papo T-Rex, the Attack Pack Colovasaurus, and Robert Muldoon from the Mattel Jurassic World toy line next to our brand new How Long Good Teenage Dinosaurus. And you can see again that uh, they are very small. They are pretty much exactly where you would expect them to be if you are familiar with the species. But they're definitely the smallest of the How Long Good figures so far from my recollection. And now we've removed one of the figures just so we can get a better idea of a comparison. But here is the How Long Good Oranosaurus as well, a figure that was recently released that I'm absolutely head over heels in love with. But you can clearly see the Oranosaurus is definitely a little bit bigger here, obviously, than our Tianzinosaurus. But for another comparison, there is the How Long Goodness Pseudoceratops, which was also recently released. Again, a nice comparison here between different How Long Good figures, further showing you that this is definitely the smallest figure from them so far. And then to really iron out the smaller size, here is a captive's supersized, it's a supersized figure, but technically still a minifigure of the Spinosaurus here, uh, standing in for a comparison. And you can definitely see they're honestly not that far off as far as the size goes. And then here is a comparison that I've actually had a lot of people requesting me to include as we have the PNSL and Kylosaurus. And you can see again a pretty big size difference between these two. So if you do happen to have the Ankylosaurus, this might help to give you an idea of the size of the new How Long Good figure, showing you again that they definitely are quite a bit different when it comes to a size. And although they have a similar looking coloration, actually having the two here next to each other, I can definitely pick out a lot of difference between the two as well. Very similar, but at the same time pretty different when it comes to the coloration. And then when it comes to a comparison with the randoms, we have the Collectate Deluxe Dimetrodon, the Schleich Diabloceratops, and Safari LTDU Tyrannus standing in here to further show you the smaller size of this figure. And then for one final comparison, because it's probably Probably the most popular GR Toys How Long Good release so far because this I believe one uh, this one was originally a collaboration between the two I don't know if it's strictly How Long Good now or what exactly but this is the Car Car Dontosaurus which is one of the most amazing figures to ever exist next to the brand new how long good Tianzinosaurus, and you can see again, pretty big massive size difference between these two, as you would expect for the species that they are obviously representing, but if you happen to have the Carcarodontosaurus, this should help to give you a pretty good idea of the size. So this brand new How Long Good Tianzinosaurus is definitely another absolutely beautiful release from How Long Good. They've absolutely been killing it lately when it comes to their releases, not only releasing some incredible figures with incredible sculpts and incredible paint, they've also been hammering out some really cool species as we've had, you know, the Aranosaurus and then the Nesutoceratops, like some pretty underrepresented species, especially when it comes to the Aranosaurus. But now we've gone even more obscure than that and created a figure of a species that I've never seen before get a figure. So that's really exciting to actually have a brand new species to enter into our collections as well. And not only that, but they really did this species justice. They completely took this figure, knocked it straight out of the park because the sculpt is beautiful, really highly detailed, like you always find when it comes to a How Long Good release. But like there is really a lot of nice, very fine detail. And it's especially impressive when it comes to the scale detail, which they've done a great job of highlighting how nice that scale detail is with the paintwork that's been applied because again on top of the really nice sculpt that we have of just a nice walking pose very nice and peaceful nothing crazy dynamic or exaggerated or anything it's just a nice natural walking pose but we have really beautiful paint apps for both of these and that may be one of the most impressive aspects of how long good as a whole is how good their actual factory released paint jobs are because we have a million different tones of color it seems on both of these figures there's just so many different very Varying tones of color applied all sorts of different kind of like spots and different slight variations of color through the course of the entire figure and it's all tied together really nicely with that really nice light wash and the light wash primarily you see it in the face and running along the back but uh it does its job perfectly to highlight the detail in an extremely realistic and lifelike way and you see that on both of the figures they both include that light wash which I think is a massive plus for both of them because again it just highlights the details so perfectly ties the paintwork together so perfectly and also continues to add to that look where they sort of look like they would absolutely be part of the same group even though they do have slightly different variation of color. But again, 
I really don't know that I can fully pick between one or the other as far as which one is my favorite because they really are both extremely impressive and extremely appealing. Like they both look 100% natural, but at the same time quite flashy. So How Long Good absolutely has done it again. They've supplied us with another amazing release with both of these figures. So if you are interested in grabbing this for yourself, I will include a link in the description to where you can purchase this on the website of Lana Time Shop. So make sure you check that link in the description absolutely recommend both of these figures you know one or both i would recommend both honestly but either way grab at least one of them and uh, add this to your collection you absolutely will not be disappointed and also like comment and subscribe and i will see you in the next review thanks for watching